what is stop motion and how does it work? I mean, I've spent a lot of time doing stop motion stuff. And if you've seen any of these films that future me will be putting up on the screen around my head, um, then you have probably heard of stop motion. So basically it's an animation technique and I will get into what it is and how it works today. Stick around to find out. Well, to know first how stop motion works, we need to know what animation is. And to know what animation is, we need to know how we, we see with our eyes. So basically, there's, of course, the parts you can see. There is the iris, the colored part. And then there's the lens, which is behind the pupil, which is sort of like a hole in the eyeball. So all the light, there will be a diagram here. All the light passes through the pupil. It goes through the eye. It gets, it gets bent by the lens. It gets focused by the lens. Imagine a camera. You have your lens on the camera, which changes how focused it is. So the lens can like bend and all, if you're looking at something closer or farther away, then the lens can change shape so that it gets, so that it's all focused at the back of your eye. But the back of your eye is the retina. So what the retina has is it has these cells called rods and cones. And these are the different cells that detect light. Rods detect in black and white and are what uh, are mostly used in low light vision. So say you wake up in the middle of the night, there's barely any light, now you'll mostly be using the rods. The cones, however, they see color, and that's mostly what you would use when there's more light, like in the middle of the day, then you would be using your cones to perceive all around the color. And these rods and cones, they get activated by the little light particles, the photons, they sort of activate the rods and cones, make them move a little bit. And this goes, and that's all going down in the retina. And that signal goes through the optic nerve and into the brain. And then it's interpreted by the brain in different ways. And depending on which color it is, that's how we perceive. So that's just how we see normally. Now, how do we see videos? Well, the analogy most people use is a camera. So how a camera takes videos is every maybe between 20 and 60 times a second. It takes a picture and it sort of shows those pictures very quickly. And our eye looks at that and it looks like video because the pictures are flashing by too quickly for our eye to see. But that's not how the eye works. The eye doesn't take pictures. That's not how, there's no shutter on the eye. Well, there is an eyelid, but that's, the eye doesn't take pictures. For example, a camera recording video can be described in FPS or frames per second, which is a very common term. So a lot of people ask, what FPS do our eyes see at? Well, if you're playing by a bunch of pictures, then it starts to look like it's moving, like a video at around 10 to 12 FPS. So that would be the lower limit. So we know that we can see if an object appears and then disappears, that sort of thing. We can see that around 50 to 90 FPS. And although this isn't really a good term for describing the eye. And fighter pilots are able to see an object appear and disappear in one 250th of a second. So that would be 250 FPS. But wait, if an object moves from say here to here, like all the way across the vision, then it could possibly be up to 20,000 FPS. So what number is it? Well, it's none of them. The eye doesn't see an FPS. If we're going to go with the picture analogy, because that is the easiest way to describe it, it's like the brain blends multiple of these pictures together into a continuously moving video. So does it, so technically it sees infinite frames per second, technically only at 12. That's not how it works. So I just want to get this out of the way, that the eye does not see an FPS. So how the eye sees video is, like, imagine you have a camera with a very long shutter time, and it will see everything sort of blend together. If you have a camera with a very long shutter time, looking at the sky, and say a star moves from here to here, Instead of seeing it here and then here, you'll see sort of like a, in the picture, you'll see sort of like a long drag. 
So her eye does that a little bit too. Obviously not very much, but there is almost like a shutter speed where her eye blends multiple pictures together and sees a moving video. And her eye can be tricked into thinking that it's a moving video after a after pictures flashing at about 12 or more frames per second, our eye and our brain sort of blends it together so it looks like a moving video. And that's how videos work. Next, we'll look at how animation and specifically stop motion works. And we'll see some a couple stop motion animations that I made myself. So, how does stop motion work? Well, basically, it's called stop motion because unlike some other techniques of animation, it's usually made by taking pictures, moving the object, taking another picture, moving objects, taking another picture. I'll show all that in a second, but the main types of stop motion, there's paper cutout stop motion, where you have paper cutouts and you move those slightly. Like imagine you have a stick person, you'll see all this in a second. Um, and you cut out each body part so you can move them separately. Then there's Lego stop motion, speaks for itself using Lego characters. So this is normally easier at a beginner stage like me, but for a huge studios, it might look better to have paper cut out stop motion. And then there's digital stop motion, which kind of is stop motion, but basically it, you use a digital software you import pictures of something and then you sort of move each thing in the digital space and create a picture on each one of those and sort of and blend those together. So basically, instead of physically maneuvering small objects with your hands, can be difficult if you're using paper cutouts, you just do it digitally. And so next, what we're going to see is something really exciting. So next, I will show you all how I make stop motion, and you'll get to see a couple that I made myself. Right, so what I will be showing now is I will show a time lapse of how I made three different stop motions. First, a paper one, which took 15 minutes, another paper one, which took an hour, um, and a Lego one, which also took an hour. All of these times are aside from uploading to my computer, and, that, and then I, I will uh, actually quickly just tell you the process of how I make one right now. So for the paper one, there will also be images here to show. Uh, for the paper one, first I will grab my paper, maybe I'll have a colored paper, and quickly make a background, you can see here. Um, then also I will uh, take characters, and depending on how much time, I will usually cut out, cut the arms. So I'll have like, I'll make the character, uh, which you'll see here, and then I will usually cut off the arms so that they can move separately. It does make it more difficult, it makes it more time consuming, but it makes it look a lot better. And then I will cut out any other props. And then I will use this app, I'm using an app called Onion Cam. There are many other apps you can use for it, but I find it pretty simple. You take a picture and then uh, you move whatever you want to move a tiny bit. So imagine the video playing, so you just start the video and you pause it just a tiny bit. So everything will move just a very small amount. There's an example here. And then that will, I, and then it will, and then I take a picture. There's also an, a nice feature called onion skinning, which basically shows you your previous frame. So you can tell, oh, if I accidentally moved something, I can move it back to what it looked like and then move only what I want to move. So yeah, that's the app I use. And then uh, it generates a video on its own. There are uh, better ones for it because the lowest frame rate it goes is 12 frames per second. So the ones you'll see, I'll probably be slowing them down a little. But it's a free app and on the App Store and it's just what I use. Um, and then I will upload it to my computer anyway. And then that's basically all for how I make it. So Lego ones are usually easier than paper ones, but paper ones have more room for creativity. So if you have more time, paper one is usually the place to go. If you have less time, Lego is usually the place to go. And if you don't care if it looks stop motion, you just want to make it as good as possible, then digital is usually the way to go. And I won't be making any digital ones because uh, I'm not very good at it. And, this, and that's not 
it's not really stop motion really it's more of like regular animation so i'll be making two paper ones and a lego one and i will be showing you a time lapse of how they're made that's it So, the moment you've all been waiting for, the final verdict! Alright, so, I will be ranking paper, Lego, and digital stop motion on a few different scales. And yeah, so, first, I will rank them on learning curve. How fast do you learn? How fast do you go from beginner to expert? So, for paper, I'm going to give it a... I'm going to give it a four. It takes quite a long time to get from beginner to expert. Lego, I'm going to give a seven or eight. It's not very difficult. Digital, I'm going to give a six out of ten. Then, uh, how, how creative can you be? How much different stuff can you do? So for this, I'm going to give Lego five out of ten. You can be pretty creative, but then you also need the Lego bricks for everything. I'm going to give paper a 9 out of 10. You can do basically anything with paper. And digital an 8 out of 10. You do need, like, images of stuff. Maybe you can use paper, but then is that really digital or is that more paper? So, you know, it's different. Then, how long does it take to make something of similar quality for each one? I will give, then for this, I will give paper, again, a 4. It takes quite a long time. Then I will give... Lego a 6, and digital an 8 out of 10, because it's a lot easier than the other two. And, uh, last but not least, how good does it look? For the same frame rate, same smoothness, how good does everything look? So for this, for digital, I will give it a 5 out of 10. It looks, it doesn't look stop motion E. It doesn't have that, like, homemade touch that the others have. Yeah, so we'll give that a 4 out of 10. I don't know if I just said 4, but I'm giving it a 4 out of 10. Paper, I'm going to give a 6 out of 10. It looks quite nice, and yeah, it could be better, though. Lego, I'm going to give an 8 out of 10, because it's 3D, you know? Lego pops out. It's 3D, so it's. I think it looks a lot better than the other two, also because there's... Yeah, just everything's 3D, really. So that means that the final winner is... Drumroll, please. Editor... Drumroll, well, that's just me, but drumroll, uh, I don't know what the winner is. This one. I, I don't actually know what I said for the out of 10, but that one is the best one on my scales, but really it depends what you're looking for. As I might have said previously, if you're looking for something to make a quick project then with, and you want it to just look good, Lego is probably your way to go. If you want to be as creative as possible and you have, and time isn't a constraint, then paper is probably the best. And if you don't care if it looks if it looks like stop motion, you just want to create an animation, then digital is the best. So I hope this video has inspired lit a spark within your mind, maybe about like making a stop motion project yourself, because it really is a fun hobby. And I hope you've learned something about vision, how we see videos, or different types of stop motion. And what was that I used to say in my previous videos? Oh yeah. Remember. You're never too young to explore. Goodbye.